So when looking at dynamics problems, we have two different situations where we can have an angle, one where you're pulling something at an angle and one where you are maybe coming down a hill or what we would call an inclined plane. So in this example, I'm gonna show, walk you through a problem where you are pulling something at an angle. So you're moving into college, you drag a 50 kilogram block, box of clothes across the floor. So we know right away that that's going to be our mass with a force of 245 newtons at 23 degrees. So this is going to be our applied force or the force that you are putting on the object. And if the coefficient of friction between the tile and the floor is 0.42, so this is going to be our mu value, then first off we want to draw a force diagram and then solve through the different variables that we can find. So if I take a force diagram, I have a picture here of the box. Remember, I'm going to condense all that down into a dot in the very center. And from that dot, I'm going to say that that is where all of the forces are acting. So what forces are acting on this object? We can pull a bunch of different ones out, but the first one is we have this applied force. So we have the applied force pulling this way of the 245 newtons at the 23 degrees. Then we could also say that there is a force pulling down on the object, which we're going to call the force of gravity. Then we're going to take from there and say, hey, if it's not moving up or down, there has to be another force that is acting up on the object that is going to be what we would call the normal force. And whenever I look at that, I drew it to be the same length, but I know because the applied force is pulling slightly up that that normal force is not going to be as big as the force of gravity because some of the up force is going to be taken into account with the applied force. Then I'm going to also have another force that is acting because I have the coefficient of friction. There's going to be a force of friction that is acting in the opposite direction. So there's my basic force diagram. Then I look at that and say, well, all of those forces are either in the up and down or side to side direction, except for my applied force, which is the force in red here. So the first thing I'm gonna probably have to do is what's asking me in B is to find the X and Y components of the applied force. So I'm gonna say, if I draw these as a dotted line, like, hey, 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 here is my X component of the applied force. And then if I draw this as a dotted line, here is my Y component of the applied force. And again, you can see that these two together going up then will be equal to the gravity. So how do I find those? Remember that I would find those by doing Y sine because X is cosine. So I'm gonna take the 245 times the cosine of the angle, 23. And I'm going to take the 245 times the sine of the angle, 23. Calculate those. I'm going to get 225.5 newtons and 95.7 newtons. So this value here is the 225.5, and this value is going to be 95.7. So the next thing that I would look at then is I would say, hey, what is this normal force going to be? Well, in order to find that, I have to know what the force of gravity is. And although I'm not given the force of gravity, I can easily find that by taking the mass, 50, times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8. Whenever I punch that in, I'm going to get 490 newtons. So now I can look at the whole thing up and down and say, hey, in the up and down direction, if the box isn't moving up and down, then all of the forces have to cancel out. So that force of gravity is going to have to be equal to the normal force plus the Y component. Or in other words, the normal force is going to be equal to the gravity minus the Y component. So I'm gonna have 490 minus that Y component of 95.7, and that gives me a normal force of 394 Point three. Next step then, once I know what that normal force value is, 394.3, remember that I can use that to find the force of friction. So I'll take and say the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction mu times the normal force. And we're given the coefficient of friction, it's the 0.42. We're given the normal force which was the, or I'm sorry, we calculated the normal force, which is this 394.3 newtons, 94.3 newtons, to give us a total force of friction, 
of 165.6 newtons. From there then, so this is going to be 165.6 newtons. So now when I look at my force diagram, it appears that I have all of the forces on it. Remember that when we broke up our applied force into its components, we really get rid of it. Then we looked at the up and down forces and said, hey, they all cancel out in order to give us this force normal value. So they go away. So the last step is to look at that and say, hey, the only forces I have left are in the left and right direction. So I can find the acceleration from that by saying that F equals MA, the net force or the sum of all of the forces has to equal the mass times the acceleration. So that X component minus the force of friction will equal MA. I'll take the 225.5 minus the force of friction, 165.6, equals the mass, 50, times A. Subtract those two, divide by the 50, and the acceleration comes out to be 1.198 meters per second squared. Then we can take from dynamics and kick back into a kinematics problem. So what is the X displacement after a certain time if that's the acceleration? So I'm probably going to have to assume that my initial velocity here is zero because you're moving it and you start dragging it. So the only equation that doesn't have the final velocity then is going to be our position equation. X equals VIT plus one half AT squared. I'm looking for X, the initial velocity is zero. Half of the acceleration we calculated above, 1.198 times a time, 0 0.46 squared. And that comes out to have an X displacement of 0.127 meters. So that's how we would do a dynamics problem that is you pulling something at an angle.